The history of combat training and martial arts is very challenging to document precisely because of the lack of historical records, the secretive nature of the teacher-student relationship, and political circumstances during much of our beginning martial arts history. It is very likely that many martial art techniques were learned, forgotten, and relearned since the start of our human history. In today's video, we will talk about the place of the way, the dojo, the place where students and instructors developed these martial art techniques and continuously worked on their physical, mental, and spiritual abilities. The place where you as a martial artist continue to develop your personality and character through vigorous training and discover a way of life. Every time you enter the dojo, you leave your daily life outside and concentrate on training to become enriched physically, mentally, and spiritually. Politeness, humility, and respect are some of the values that should dominate within the confines of the dojo. These traits that are developed in this place are intended to be taken outside for the building of a better life and a more just society. If you have ever visited a traditional karate dojo, you have probably noticed the unique qualities, traditions, and beauty that they possess. The name dojo itself means a place for the way. The term was first used to refer to the meditation and prayer halls used by the Buddhist monks, where they did their studies, practice, and teaching of Buddha and the Dharma. Like the Buddhist monks, the members of the Bushi Samurai warrior class in Japan followed a strict training regime meant to develop the samurais in a physical, mental, and spiritual way. The feudal lords established training compounds and halls to be able to train these samurai warriors. There were a lot of similarities in how the Buddhist monks and the samurai warriors trained and establish the relationship between student and instructor. The term dojo was adopted to refer to these compounds, training halls, and any other place where students and instructors of the art studied the path of Budo and the warrior way. As the years passed, Zen Buddhists stopped using the name dojo, which was replaced with the specific term zendo, but the name dojo remained and is used to this day to refer to a former martial art training hall. The name dojo is used to call any place where Japanese martial arts is studied and practiced with the respect, tradition, and sincerity between instructors and students of the art. The origin of the term dojo is found in the Sanskrit Bodhi Mandala, which is a term in Buddhism that means circle of awakening where Bhiksus monks and Bhiksunis nuns practice and teach about the Buddhist Dharma. Bodhi Mandala also generally refers to a holy place of enlightenment, a place for teaching and learning about Buddha and the Dharma, a place where Gautama Buddha attained to perfect wisdom. The term Bodhi Mandala was then translated as the character Do in Japanese or Dao in Chinese, which means the way and the character Jo in Japanese, in Chinese character Chang, which means a place used for specific purposes. The dojo, therefore, is the place where you study the way, meaning the place where you develop your physical, mental, and spiritual aspect of your character. Originally, the dojo was a hall, a place, 
a monastery for learning and practicing Buddhism. But gradually, the use of the name Dojo drifted away from the original meaning of a place where enlightenment was achieved and where the teachings of Buddhism were studied. During the Edo period 1600 to 1868, some martial arts schools started calling their training halls dojos. And with the creation of Judo by Jigoro Kano from Jujitsu, which was practiced by the samurais to fight enemies at close quarters, on the battlefield, practice halls were called dojos and started spreading rapidly. Kano Jigoro's first dojo had just nine students and measured just about 24 square yards. Judo has been an Olympic sport since 1964 and is practiced in dojos all over the world. Today, Judo, Karate and most Japanese Do martial arts call their practice halls a dojo. The Korean martial arts have their own term called dojong and in Chinese martial arts, the practice halls are called kwan or guan. In the United States though, the word dojo is also used for training halls that teach Korean martial arts like Tang So Do and Taekwondo. Other names for dojo used around the world are Akhara in Indian martial arts, Heya in sumo wrestling, Kalari in Kalari Payat, Sasaran in Pankak Silat, and Wogwan in Woshu. Traditionally, the architectural aspect of the dojo must follow strict rules concerning the orientation, entrance, and placement of the dojo. The front of the dojo is called shomen and as a rule should be located at the north end of the dojo facing south. The opposite side is called shimoza or the lower seats where students sit according to their ranks. Typically lower rank students will enter and sit in the lower left corner of the dojo in reference to the shomen and the higher rank students will sit in the upper right corner. Historical references show that the beginner students, the no rank students, were near the entry and exit of the dojo, while the highest ranking students sat next to the master and protected him. If the dojo would get attacked, the no ranks would be the front line of defense and see combat first, like pawns in a chess game. The higher ranks would sit closer to the master, which would usually sit on the north side, facing south by the Shinto shrine. In a dojo, the Shinto shrine usually contains a sculpture, flower arrangement, and other artifacts corresponding to the beliefs of the art practiced. Shinto itself is actually a religion which originated in Japan and is a belief in kami, which are gods or spirits and are the supernatural entities at the center of the religion. The term Kamiza in the dojo is the place of honor by the Shinto shrine, and is usually the place furthest from the door because it was the warmest and the safest from the enemy attacks in the Japanese feudal period. Kamiza is where the main master instructor usually sits. Some other artifacts are displayed in the front of the dojo, like the taiko drums and any armor used if applicable. The name of the dojo itself, the dojo rules, and the dojo kun. In the back of the dojo, you will usually find weapons, training pads, and any other training gear that is used in the particular martial art. These rules of the dojo in today's society are, however, often very difficult to realize, since most dojos are built in a way that has to comply with today's reality, and the variables of today's time which affect the building of a dojo hall. However, it is important to keep in mind the symbolism and the principles of the dojo, to uphold the values of the dojo as an individual and as a collective group, and most importantly it is advised to follow the basic rules such as respect, discipline, and even tolerance. Traditionally, the students of the dojo would help support and manage the dojo. This was a way to reinforce the importance of discipline 
and instill a sense of respect of the martial art. The training session would usually begin and end with a ritual of cleaning the dojo. At the beginning and end of the class, the students would bow to the instructors and to the dojo itself to acknowledge and show respect and appreciation to the higher ranks and to the dojo hall itself. A dojo is considered to be a special place, a place dedicated to the study and practice of budo and martial arts. It is a place for immersive training, it is a big part of the epic journey of your life of a martial artist and as a good, respectful, strong human being. Us. Thank you for watching, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys on the next video. Arigato.